Good morning, everyone, and welcome to St. John the Baptist Cathedral Basilica Parish for the funeral mass of Elizabeth Perry. At this time, we ask that you take a few moments to silence your phones. Our presider this morning is Father Cecil Critch, and to prepare for our mass today, we'd like for you to open up your Catholic Book of Worship to number 564, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Please stand for the funeral procession. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning, everybody. We welcome today Betty's daughters, Anne and Susan, here today, and online. We welcome also the people online, Weldon and Franz, her sons. We also welcome grandchildren, great-grandchildren here and online, and all of the relatives, friends, Randy and Sally, Betty's caregivers, our sister-in-laws, Sister Loretta Chief and Daphne Chief, our wonderful choir members who are so much a part of our life. I welcome all of you here today uh, to help us with our music. It'd be wonderful. I'm looking forward to hearing you all sing today. We reflect here today on, first of all, on Betty's baptism. She was brought into the church and became a child of God and became a member of the Christian family in her baptism. And in her baptism, she was clothed with the garment of salvation. And we commend her today to the mercy of God and surround her with the church to prayer. Let us praise the Lord Jesus Christ who has raised us to a new life in baptism. Please join in our opening hymn number 564, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. Yeah. 
let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Betty, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rise, rejoice to rise again to him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Please be seated now, our first part of our liturgy, Mass today, our Liturgy of the Word, and we call Laura for the first reading. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. God has made everything beautiful in its time. God has also set eternity in the hearts of humanity, yet cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. The word of the Lord. Our psalm can be found on page 607 in the Catholic Book of Worship. The Lord is my shepherd and nothing do I want. Indeed, 
his grace and kindness will follow me through all the days of my life and I shall live in the house of the Lord for many years to come the Lord is my shepherd Second reading by Sarah. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him for we will see him as he is. The word of the Lord. to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going? And Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We gather today in sadness with Betty's family, our friends and relatives to offer this mass of Christian burial for Betty and her beloved Cathedral Basilica Parish. And at the beginning we reflect that in baptism Betty and each of us were made a child of God, a temple of the Holy Spirit, and a member of the Christian community. Each of us is chosen, called, and gifted by God to be a light in the darkness of this world hence the meaning of the baptismal candle here, and we began our journey back to our Creator who made us. God calls each of us and gifts each of us for a particular service that is unique to each of us. God calls us first of all to love, especially to love, to love God and our neighbor as ourselves. 
and to be an example of the love and mercy of God for other people. Betty's calling, her vocation was to family life, and we gather at this funeral mass to thank God for a wonderful, joyful life. We thank God for her gentle and loving presence among all of you, for she loved life to the full and had a generous, loving heart. I knew her from my visits to be a woman of great faith, and she loved attending mass where she, when she could and watched online or TV when she could not attend in person. When I brought Holy Communion to her, you could see her devout belief in the presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament and her joy in receiving him. Reading online submissions and speaking to Susan, we know that Betty first of all loved her family dearly. She had a great joy and passion for singing and dancing and playing musical instruments. She was a member of community choir. She loved performing at seniors' homes and other community events and even traveled uh, with her singing group to Ireland, which was a highlight for her. She loved to be a part of any musical occasion. Betty worked to support her family. She worked at the Arts and Culture Center in Gander. She was there, I think, 35 years in Gander, and also at St. Paul's School as secretary. Her many Gander friends on Call's website recalled her as a dear friend, full of fun, entertaining and bright, always pleasant and kind, generous to those in need, hospitable and welcoming. These are some of the qualities they said. I chose one online comment, was from Michael and Annette Boyle, who say, said, and I quote, Betty was an amazing person and she always had a great welcome for everyone. When I arrived at the steps of St. Paul's School as a young teacher, Betty was the first person I met. I have never forgotten that smile and great hospitality. Above all, Betty loved her family and gathering with them on special occasions. Her grandchildren, great-grandchildren, loved to come back to Newfoundland, spend quality time with her. In her little piece of heaven, she said, her home on Prospect Street, where she happily lived most of her life. Betty had a great love of animals. Now, I'm not a cat person, so I, can, I cannot vouch for that, but I'm a dog person. But uh, I was, when I visited her, she was certainly attentive to her cats and loved our animals dearly. Our first reading was from the book of Ecclesiastes, and Ecclesiastes tradition tells us that book of Ecclesiastes was written by King Solomon toward the end of his reign. And typical of Jewish poetry describing opposites, we read that each time and season may seem random, but the underlying significance in the poem denotes a divinely chosen purpose for everything we experience in our lives. Our lives contain a mixture of joys and sorrow, pleasure and pain, harmony and struggle, life and death. Each season has its appropriate time in the cycle of life. This poem, beautiful poem, centers on God's ultimate authority in heaven and on earth. Humans have mastered many things in this world, but some elements of our existence are beyond our control. Nothing stays the same, and we as God's children must learn to accept and adjust to the ebb and flow of God's design. Some seasons are difficult and we may not understand what God is doing. In those times, we humbly submit to God's plans and trust that God is working out God's will for us in our lives. And Betty certainly worked with God in her life and certainly obeyed God's will for her life for sure. This evening and tomorrow, Palm Sunday, we begin the most sacred Holy Week of the churchly year culminating with the sacred three days, the Tritium, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter. During this week, we recall the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. We call it the Paschal Mystery. It all culminates with the most sacred day of the Christian religion, Easter, the resurrection of Jesus. And today, at our funeral, we reflect on that promise that as Christians, we believe that life is, that death is changed, not ended with life. We recall that Jesus proved how precious and valuable each one of us is to him and how much he loved us when he died for us and rose again and has prepared a place for us in the Father's house. Our joy in heaven will consist in being continually in the loving presence of God. As loved children of God, we have a glorious future because God in his goodness and mercy and generosity wants to share God's love and life with us eternally for we shall see our God face to face. We see that in that beautiful second reading from John. Jesus also told us, you know, that in our life, you know, as a follower of his, we will 
have crosses to bear. We take up our cross daily and follow him. That's not always easy. Betty accepted the challenges of her life and was certain that Jesus was by our side carrying our crosses with her. She was a certainly an Easter person. As Christians, we believe our vocation, what gives greatest meaning to life, what we are born for is to embrace God's love and to reflect that love back to the world, as Betty did. That reflection of God's love is at the heart of a Christian life, and that's how we will be judged at the end of our life, how we had been a light in the darkness of our world, and how we have loved others by our everyday acts of kindness. As we see Betty end her earthly journey to journey back to the Father, know that her love for you, her family, and friends continues beyond death. We commend Betty today to the loving mercy of God and may that she have peace on her journey home to the Father. May Jesus, the Good Shepherd, carefully and lovingly carry her to her eternal rest. I, was, I saw in line that people were supposed to uh, wear red. So I will read about a rose today. And this is a beautiful poem about a rose. A rose once grew where all could see sheltered beside a garden wall. And as the days passed swiftly by, it spread its branches straight and tall. One day, a beam of light shone through a crevice that had opened wide. The rose bent gently toward its warmth, then passed beyond to the other side. Now you who deeply feel its loss, be comforted. The rose blooms there, its beauty even greater now, nurtured by God's own loving care. Amen. Please stand and I call forward Pat for the prayers of intercession. My dear friends, let us join with one another in praying to God, not only for our departed sister Betty, but also for the church, the people of God, for peace in our world and for ourselves. Oh, sorry. There was a change. I'm sorry. Okay. I'll ask Randy to come forward for the intercession. In baptism, Betty received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our sister Betty was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Betty seek comfort and consolation. <clears throat> Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Betty. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. 
We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Creator and Redeemer, by your power, your only Son has conquered death and has passed from this world into your kingdom. Grant that our sister Betty may share his triumph over death and enjoy forever the vision of your glory through Christ our Lord. Please be seated now for our offertory procession. We began our, the part of our Mass called the Liturgy of the Eucharist. We'll ask you to, those who are bringing afford the gifts, to go and get retrieve the gifts. Thank you. Our hymn for the preparation of the gifts can be found in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 630, Lord, make us servants of your peace, 630. Lord, make us servants of your peace, where there is hate, may we so Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Let us pray. Look favorably on our offerings, O Lord, so that your departed servant Betty may be taken up into glory with your Son, in whose great mystery of love we are all united through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, in him the hope of re blessed resurrection is dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with all the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> Thank you. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. To bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember your servant Betty, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, especially the relatives of Betty. Welcome all of them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. John the Baptist and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. baptized Christians, we pray in the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Our who Father, art in who heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come. thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, give us this day our, our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against, against us. And lead and us not into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, the people of God. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With your spirit. And we share that peace of Christ now with one another. Behold, 
the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Yeah. 
stand and let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Betty may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let our cross and candles. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister Betty. May our last prayer well express our affection for her, may it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again, when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. In baptism, Betty shared in the death and resurrection of Christ. May she be welcomed, welcomed into the glory of eternal life. As a sign of respect for our sister Betty, we let this incense rise to God, who has called her to share in God's glory. Songs of the Angels, 10C in the Catholic Book of Worship.
hands, Father of mercies. We commend our sister Betty in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him. We give you thanks for the blessing which you bestowed upon Betty in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister Betty forever. Thank all of you for your presence here today. It's a great sign of comfort for the family today, I'm sure. And um, also thank uh, uh, Alma and Patty for the music today, beautiful music today. As well, you know, uh, thank all those who helped in Mass, Pat and Grania for planning, uh, our, our bereavement team for planning out the liturgy today as well. So thank all of you at Carl's Funeral Home for the professional service and all who helped the family in any way. Thank you. Dear friends, may every mark of affection, every gesture of friendship that you give to others be a sign of God's peace for you. In peace and the sure hope of the resurrection, we take leave of the re remains of our sister, knowing that one day we shall be with her in heaven. And may Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Our missioning hymn can be found in the Catholic Book of Worship, number 554, How Great Thou Art, 554. <laughs>
See.